Ever since the days of ProTracker on the Amiga, we've seen the power of changing the size, 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 and position. Position of a sample loop. Doing this by hand was always a cool effect, but actually controlling this while an instrument is playing in a song has always been impossible. With Renoise version 3, the focus is on expanding the possibilities of sample based instruments, so it seems like the perfect time to work out how to implement this long sought after feature. First, let's clear up what the term sample means. The average person thinks of it as a piece of an existing song that is recorded and then reused in another song, especially if it's done illegally. A sample can be this, but it can also be a recording of a completely new sound or a sound that's generated internally without recording an external source. Unless you're still using reel-to-reel analogue tape recordings, a sample is actually just any digital file that is played back as audio, which is something that Renoise can do with anything. Not particularly useful perhaps, but it illustrates the point that samples are constructed from digital data and zooming in, we can see the tiny parts that become the audio when played back. So why am I pointing this out? Well, each of these individual parts is what's also known as a sample. So for this video and any others I make in future, when I talk about a sample or a sample, you'll know the difference and which I'm referring to. The other reason, which is specific to the topic of this video, is that with loop point automation, we want to be able to use a loop of any size, even all the way down to the level of these individual samples. So, what would the benefits be to having this implemented in Renoise? Obviously it's fun to just automate the, the size and position of loop. Having them affected via the signal follower, key and velocity trackers, or any of the meta devices would really open up the possibilities for new sound creativity. I saw the power of small loops interacting with effects, specifically the lo-fi mat, when creating the kitten ZP. <laughs> It generates wildly unpredictable but useful results and moving a loop point by even a single sample has a massive effect on the sound. Being able to automate this and combining it with the new modulation capabilities, the results would truly be limitless. I went back and read all of the past threads on the Renoise forum, looking at the ideas and suggestions on this topic, and it has given me an idea of how this could work. But the real point of this video is to promote discussion so we can arrive at the best possible solution. Anyway, here it is. We want to be able to move the loop points around by as large or small a range as possible. It would be rather complicated to send extremely precise time values to a loop point in order to achieve this, so instead it is moved forwards or backwards in time relative to its original position. To do this, we have to set the original positions with the original loop markers, and now any changes made to the loop point positions will be represented by these new markers which will move around as the values are automated. 
To make the automation as useful as possible, we also require the ability to 1. Move both loop points at once. 2. Move them at different speeds. 3. Move them in different directions. 4. All of the above. Taking all this into account, I believe the following approach would work best. This is a track effect device. It could be a sample effect device, but that would require a lot of macros to make use of the options fully. So the instrument and sample you're affecting is selected here and here. The snap menu offers options to change the time value that the loop points will move to. Samples, seconds, whole, which is a percentage of the whole sample length, markers for slice markers, beats, and the fractions of a beat. The range parameter alters the numerical range of the sliders so the automation can be as precise as you want. With the link mode enabled, the start and end parameters will move around together, requiring the use of only one slider. The loop type is inherited from the sample properties, but can also be changed here. The icon just after this toggles whether loop points can cross over each other, which will swap their start and end statuses. The second icon toggles the link mode behaviour in the following way. If a loop point reaches the start or end of the sample, the other loop point will continue moving towards it, decreasing the loop size. But loops will of course remain at least one sample apart at all times. That's it for now. I have no idea how feasible these ideas are, but with the current focus on enhancing the power of sample-based instruments and how that in turn feeds into the usefulness of Redux, I believe sample loop point automation to be a highly desirable feature. There's a link in the video description to this topic on the Renoise forum and another link where you can download Renoise songs containing all of the sounds, music and narration from this video. They're distributed with a Creative Commons license, so you can do whatever you like with them. A word of note about the music though. Due to the rapidly cycling nature of the looped samples, you'll need to run Renoise at a sample rate of 48kHz to get it to sound the same as this.